You guys get it? So you wonder how are we getting, how is supply getting lower? How does it keep getting, it's because we're getting further and further behind. We're, we're not building enough houses. And there's lots of reasons for that. Now we've got supply chain issues. We've got inflation, the cost of lumber, the cost of plumbing, the cost of labor, the cost of everything. So supply is getting way behind. So the idea that housing prices are going to turn around anytime soon, it's ludicrous. That's why everyone's buying real estate that knows about it. That's why every hedge fund's doing it, every real estate investment trust. That's why Bezos, that's why Elon Musk, they're all going into investing in startups that are just buying up housing across the country. Facts. We do have a lot of inflation right now. Costs are going up. That's a fact. Okay. But understand what inflation is. Okay. Inflation, which we really haven't seen any inflation in 35 years. It's been a very long time since we've seen prices go up of any kind. Okay. So we've been kind of looking for inflation for a while. Now we've got a lot of making up to do. <laughs> now we can point fingers at different political parties and uh, I hope you're not pointing it at one of them because that would be a mistake. They've both contributed to this mess. <laughs> um, so I will tell you this, inflation is what happens when a market or an economy is doing too well, okay? That's why the Federal Reserve Board comes out and increases interest rates with the hopes of slowing it down. It's how they hit the brakes, okay? And then when the brakes get hit, things slow down. People invest less. They sell and they don't buy on the stock markets. The stock market goes down. They don't buy as much real estate because mortgage rates typically shoot up. So everything slows a little bit. It goes from an A plus down to an A or an A minus. And everybody freaks out and says, the sky is falling, the world's gonna end, sell everything. Go to the gold standard. Start buying gold and put bricks of gold. It's amazing. You have an out of control economy where people are making more money than they've ever made. People have better credit scores than they've ever had. They have more home equity than they've ever had. They've had more wealth than they've ever had. We have the highest percentage of a home ownership and home housing affordability than we've ever had. And all it takes is a slight tap on the brakes and everybody thinks it's all going to end. Welcome to today's media. We got to have something to talk about. Guys, don't be that freak out. You need to be the calming voice. You need to explain to people how to calm down. Make sense? Because that's all this is. It's an out of control, awesome economy. Do you know what our unemployment rate is? 3.24%. What the heck? I mean, for the last 15 years, it's been over 9%. And that was considered ideal. I don't even know what 3.24% is. That means we got to have babies because we need more. I mean, it's an amazing economy. So yes, they are slowing it down. Why is it so amazing? I mean, I guess you can argue that. I mean, you could say it's because the government printed too much money and gave it away. Probably true. I don't know. But it is what it is. So the idea that the world's going to end, no. Is there going to be some sort of correction? Sure. That's the idea. They're artificially trying to make one happen by increasing interest rates. So let's don't freak out. That makes sense? And you'll see it's very politically charged. If you turn on Fox, Fox News, or Fox Business, they're going to say it's the end of the world right now, that everything has gone to hell because of a $2 trillion budget that was passed. If you turn on CNBC, CNN, or MSNBC, they're gonna say it's a, it's a much more mild problem because they're liberal and we have a liberal administration in the office. And that's because of Trump's $10 trillion in spending coming out of COVID. So they're both gonna point, they're both right. I mean, I don't know which is more and what, and you know, but they have both spent too much money. There's probably too much money flowing around. People have too much of it, not paying it back, don't have to pay it back, you know? So that's going to cause them to spend a lot of money and it's going to drive prices up because buyer demand goes through the roof. There's not enough supply. So what happens? It costs more for the supply. That's what inflation is, guys. That's where it comes from. The discretionary spending gets out of control. 
demand gets out of control, causes prices to go up because there's not enough supply. We call it appreciation in real estate. Same thing, different word. It's more of a positive word because all of our houses get worth more. If you don't have a house and you're waiting to get one, poor seat, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Like, uh oh, should have bought a house. We told you that it's going to be tougher now because <laughs> it ain't coming back around for you. I can tell you that makes sense. So that's the idea. So let's don't be negative. Let's afford, let's inform our people. Okay. And we might be, I don't think it's a big deal. Um, but let, what is the, does anybody know what the definition of a recession is? Anybody know what qualifies as a recession? How do we know we're in a recession? Anybody know what that is? I'll count to 10. One, and you can unmute yourself or type it. One, two, I know someone's Googling. Three, <laughs> four. Negative growth? Yes. Got to be a little bit more specific though. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay. So this is the accepted definition of a recession. It's two quarters consecutive of declining gross domestic product, GDP. So it's two consecutive quarters of a declining GDP. That's all it takes and you're in recession. Now understand, we just came off of the three highest quarters in GDP in our country's history. It's going to be kind of hard to not have two consecutive quarters of declining GDP. It's like you're going from an A plus to an A minus and saying the sky is falling. So if you have these two outrageously high quarters of gross domestic product, which means the goods we produce and sell in America, we've had three quarters, which is nine months of the highest amount of domestic sales in America, whether that be real estate or cars or cereal or whatever toys, you name it, clothing. We the three, the nine highest months ever. And what they're saying is if it declines after that, you're in a recession. Well, I guess you're right. So it still may be the best business environment, the second best business environment in history, but we still have to call it a recession. And you know how our press is, you know how our media is, Ah, the sky is falling. COVID will kill your babies, eat your dog, and a recession's going to end your life. Because they got to have something to get you to watch. They got to have those glaring headlines. Right? I mean, if you go to London, it's like Michael Jackson had an alien baby that is sleeping with Elizabeth Taylor's daughter, and she's the queen of England's illegitimate sister. You know, that's their headline across the London newspaper. Ours aren't that bad. Like we don't have the tabloids, but we're getting there. We're definitely moving in that direction. So get that. So that's all a recession is. If we go into recession, which it's going to be hard not to, I'm not sure it's that bad of a place to be, relatively speaking. It's certainly better than 2007, pre-COVID. And pre-COVID was pretty good. 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 2019. Man, those were some of the best years to be in real estate. It was just steady appreciation, averaging about six to 7% a year. The economy's doing great. Everybody's coming up. We're not even talking about going back as far to those levels. So let's take everything with a grain of salt here. A recession doesn't mean it's the end of the world. I know a lot of people want to think that. Again, I told you the politics don't matter, but if your favorite dude is not the president right now, it tends to mean that your party is running around saying the world's ending. And vice versa when the other party's in office. So just understand people have different motives than logic. Make sense? 
real important. Um, so that's the concept here. Now I want to show you guys something. So this basically means a recession doesn't equal a housing crisis. Okay, we've had plenty of recessions in the past. 1980 was very similar to the one we're going through, in my opinion. High, high inflation, interest rates. I mean, if you think we have inflation now, it's nothing compared to 1980. It was so bad in the 80s that interest rates went up to like 17%, just to let you know, and they stayed there. Um, but despite, you can see, home prices still continue to rise the entire time throughout the 80s at a good rate. The roaring 80s, right? The economy went well too. I mean, that was the roaring 80s. That was when everybody was making money. I mean, Crockett and Tubbs were starring in Miami Vice. Everybody was driving Ferraris. Cocaine was like buying a freaking bag of flour. It was everywhere. I mean, people had money. The 80s were the roaring Reagan years. That was a very wealthy time to be in America. Housing prices and real estate went through the roof despite high interest rates and a recession that started it out, okay? Then in 1991, we had a slight recession, slight dip in rates. One of the few times prices dropped for, is for about a year. 2001, 9-11 created a big recession. That's how interest rates got down and prices just went up. After 9-11 uh, occurred, I mean, our economic market shut down. I mean, that was the reasons the Fed dropped rates down to 0% for the first time. We really haven't had rates go up since uh, significantly. Um, that's, we haven't seen inflation since 9-11. 9-11, it's like we've been trying to find our economy again. And, you know, you know, housing boom happened, but uh, the economy didn't follow. And ultimately we had too much houses built and the market crashed. Giving everybody free loans, all that kind of stuff. Um, when they really weren't making that much money. So we've been really trying to find inflation, trying to create a great, strong economy ever since, right? 2008 was the only time we saw housing prices drop, but understand this was different. This was a decline in home prices actually caused this reception. It wasn't the way around. It wasn't like a recession happened and then prices dropped. It was, it was vice versa. Prices dropped because we had too much housing supply and not enough real buyer demand. And then the recession followed. That's when all the banks shut down because all the people were foreclosing on, they had to foreclose on all those properties, all those loans went default. It was terrible. So again, this one started with housing. So housing prices dropped, then the recession. Just the only other time that's happened was way back in the 30s, the Great Depression. It's the only other time that's happened. And if you, if you don't know what that felt like, just watch It's a Wonderful Life with Jimmy Stewart because he owns one of the banks in Bedford Falls. And it's a great Christmas time classic if you've not watched It's a Wonderful Life. You must watch it or you do not know what Christmas is because that is Christmas, that and Jesus. And what happens is, um, you know, the banks failed because everybody started foreclosing on their loans or everybody started defaulting on their loans and all the banks failed. Very similar to what happened in the Great Recession. That happens about once every hundred years, according to historical trends, but it does not come from a slight little recession. Okay. And then you can see 2020, we had a little recession too. Remember that it was called COVID. Like it was so bad. The government just started printing money, $6 trillion in a matter of three months because everybody was sheltering in place. And boy, did housing prices go up during that period. And that was just in three months, they went up about 6%. Ended up going up about 15, 16% that year and another 20% the year afterwards, despite a huge recession that turned around because of all that money that was printed and turned into inflation, which is crazy. So we have to understand. So that's the start. So this whole recession is not going to end the world. We are going to live. Now, I want to look at annual home sales. This has been updated. I've shown this before, but I want you to see it. This is the amount of home sales that occur. So this is not home prices, this is home sales. Remember, there's two housing markets. When you talk about the real estate market, you're either talking about sales or prices. Prices are gonna keep going up because we have a shortage of supply. They may not go up as fast or as much all at once, but they're gonna go up because we don't have enough supply and supply and demand rules everything. Sales are a different story. We're probably going to go from an A plus to an A minus there. But if you watch the news, they're going to say, oh my God, it's a bubble bursting. We're going to a D or an F. 
That ain't gonna happen. Almost impossible. But you can see last year, we had a record up here at about 6.4 million home sales in America. This year, we're projecting about 6 million, which would make it the third highest year in the history of America. But it is gonna be down year over year. So everybody's gonna say home price, home sales are down, real estate market's cooling, bubbles bursting. That's what all the headlines are gonna say. But then if you read between the lines, which I always encourage you to do, you're going to see it's a very minor, subtle adjustment that's still pretty awesome. Because boy, look at 2013 all the way through 2020. We're higher than that still. And those were some pretty darn good years. This is kind of that A plus to an A minus deal. Might even still be an A, not even an A minus. Make sense? Now look at the worst year, you know, in the last 30 years. You're down here, at four, this was 2000 like, eight to 2010. This is when, you know, the great recession. I don't want to go back this far because our population was so much lower. There was definitely less home sales. Now this is kind of in the modern day and age. I doubt we'll ever get down here again because our population keeps growing at such a high rate that there's just more houses to be sold. But if you look here, I mean, this is the lowest of the low versus the highest of the high. And you're looking at a difference of about maybe 28% swing in total home sales. And that's from the lowest of the low to the highest of the high. So you can see even in the worst markets, there's still a very, very large percentage of home sales out there and commission dollars earned. So we are gonna see less home sales this year in all likelihood, but not that much less, still better than almost any other year in history. Okay, so again, don't freak. We're going to be fine. 30 year rates. Yep, those have come back up and gone back down a little bit. Again, take a look at this. Look at all these years we all lived in real estate. I got my license way back here in the late 80s. I mean, I came in at like, you know, 11% fixed rate for 30 years. Throughout the 90s, I lived at 8, 9%. It's so funny to hear you guys say that the world's going to end because things went up to 5%. It's pretty funny. Trust me, we'll live. <laughs> we'll make it. <laughs> you know, this is a slight tapping of the brakes. Slight tapping of the brakes. Okay. So you can see here, even those 1980s. Remember I said in 1980, we had this out of control inflation. So the Fed started raising rates to slow down our GDP and the amount of money that was flowing in the economy to curb inflation. So prices wouldn't get too out of control. And it worked. Inflation started to come down. They slowed the economy down through increased interest rates to slow things down. Do you see that? So throughout the 80s, we had these astronomically high rates. I mean, much high, higher than credit cards today. But look at the 80s at home prices. These are your average home prices in America. You can see the shaded area represents the, 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 the recession at the start, high inflation, raising rates. But look what happened to home prices. Freaking nothing. They're just steady Eddie going up the whole time. It was the roaring 80s. That's when the Fed and a, and a guy, I think the Fed chairman was Alan Greenspan back there. He used to get in arguments with Ronald Reagan all the time. Reagan would say, lower the rates, make everyone happy. Greenspan say, nope, I got to control the economy. Well, it definitely worked with housing. Definitely worked with housing. So despite those, despite starting with the recession, having high, high, high inflation, having high, high, high mortgage rates, we still saw prices increase. To highlight that, I want you, I want to show you this. You can see all the different times where we had a rate increase and a home price increase. In fact, if we go back to 1970, you can see there hasn't been a single time that we've had rates go up where home prices didn't follow and go up at the exact same time. Not a single freaking time. And you can see every one of these times we had rate increases, we had home price increases every single time. So remember, there, now it will slow down home sales. That's why you guys but it won't slow down prices. Prices are controlled by supply and demand. 
And a, a rise in interest rates does not affect supply and demand. Here's how come. You're thinking, well, it'll really hurt demand, right? Because people won't want to buy as much with higher rates. True, but it'll also hurt supply equally because I'm not going to list my house at a 3% interest rate to go buy one at a 5% interest rate. So therefore, I'm not going to put my house on the market, which keeps supply lower. So supply drops, but it was already much lower than demand. So both supply and demand drop at the equal amount when rates go up. So if supply is much, much, much lower than demand, prices are going to continue to increase. That's why rates don't infect. And that's why these stupid people writing these blogs say things like the housing bubble is going to burst. Prices are going to crash. Sales are down. You're like, what are you talking about? Sales are different than prices. There's two real estate markets. Do not confuse them. Prices and sales, they, they don't have to go in alignment with each other. So rates going up will slow down sales from an A plus to an A minus. But that doesn't mean they're going to slow prices. Does this make sense? Guys, I'm telling you this so you understand it. So you keep investing in real estate yourselves because it's a great time to be doing that. I'm a big real estate investor and I can tell you right now, I can finally buy houses again without all you firemen and teachers trying to buy houses because you're all spooked. All your clients are freaked out. Oh my gosh, I'm worried there's gonna be a bubble crash. I'm not gonna buy. So now the smart money like myself can go buy it all up and price you guys out. A year from now, you won't be able to afford houses. You're gonna be my tenants forever because you're gonna miss them boat on the American dream. Not joking, but you know, we're a capitalist society. So you get ahead by getting more. It's the way it works. If you don't like it, write your congressman, vote for socialism, I guess. I don't know, because that's the way it works in an open market capitalist society. Yeah, I feel bad for the people that didn't make the right decisions and buy real estate, because it's just gonna go up on it. And I, got, and I want you guys to know that too. Understand, do you know that in America, 74% of Americans can afford to buy a house as of two years ago. Now it's down to like 60, I think 6% or something because the housing prices jumped up. Do you know what it was back in the eighties? 42%. It's headed back there, guys. That's why they used to call it the American dream. It was a dream that not everyone could achieve. It was a privilege to own a home. You weren't entitled. Sorry, millennials, you don't just get to own a home. You have to fight your way up. And that is going to keep happening because we are way out of normal capitalist open market equilibrium to have that high of a percentage of our population being able to afford a home. So it's gonna keep dropping because people like me are gonna buy well more than their fair share of houses because I know you need a roof over your head. You're not gonna live in a tent. So you're gonna pay me more money in rent. So rents are gonna keep climbing. And they have been climbing, as I'm going to show you. Do you think that's sad? Maybe, I don't know. Write your congressman. It is what it is. Play the game and write your congressman, because that's about all you can do. You can march and protest too, all of those things. But if you're getting emotional about it, I don't want you representing me, because your job is to inform people of this. Because there's a lot of dumb people out there, the firemen, the teachers, the police officers, the gardeners, the people that don't have any business knowledge whatsoever, nor are they required to, but they are dumb when it comes to economics and dumb when it comes to real estate that are relying on you to guide them and steer them straight. And if they have that dumb opinion that don't worry, housing prices will come back because too many of us can't afford it, they're wrong. They won't, they don't have to, they are not entitled to have them do that, nor is it likely to happen because rents will go up too. So we can keep affording to buy more because we know those increased rents will cover the cost of them because we have a shortage of housing in America that isn't gonna be solved any time this decade. Any time this decade. I'm gonna say it again. That ain't coming around soon because that kind of thing doesn't come around soon. If you think housing prices is correct all the time, au contraire, mon frere, they certainly do not. You can go back all the way to 1960, which is 62 years ago, and you can see the history of home prices. 
about once every hundred years, we have a tiny little dip like this. The media will call something with the word great in front of it, great depression, great recession, whatever. And then about four years later, it's all gone and we forget it even happened. And it just keeps going up again for another hundred years. That's what ends up happening. So if you think real estate markets go up and down and up and down, again, look at my chart. This is the US Census Bureau and NAR. You can see housing prices go up. In fact, it wasn't even until the Great Recession that we thought that they ever, ever, ever were gonna go down again because it had been so long since the Great Depression. Make sense? Moving on. So yeah, if you're waiting for this to happen again, oh boy, have fun with that. And you can see this is every year's annual appreciation. Um, we're still projecting a 16% increase in home prices this year, just to let you know. I'm gonna say that again. Rate, home prices went up 19% last year and 9% the year before. And they went up, you know, at a healthy clip all the way to like all the way back to like 2011. We're projecting 16% again this year. We're already up about six or seven percent. Um, just because there's even less inventory this year than there was last year, which means there's less supply. So, and more and more people are buying them. And I mean, Goldman Sachs is still projecting 19%. Um, Chase, you know, JP Morgan Chase is projecting, I think, 21% increase because they don't care about homeowner affordability. I mean, Jeff Bezos is out there buying up every, I mean, he, he started his own real estate investment trust uh, out there buying up more real estate than he can find because he knows that prices have to keep going up. There's just not enough houses for people. They need more rentals. I mean, do you know anybody that can find rentals either? No. How about find a house to buy? No. That's, housing is a blood diamond. It's going up in value. Everybody needs it. They'll kill for it. Housing supply, how do we get this way? Well, over time, we you know, this is each, no inventory in the winter, then it comes up in the summer. None in the winter, comes up in the summer. None in the winter, comes up in the summer. Then all of a sudden the pandemic happens. Boom, 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 boom. Everybody invested. Prices went up. More and more people invested. Now we've been playing around down here. And it's start through March. It's starting to come up. Everybody freaked out. Oh my gosh, it's a recession. There's no inventory. But now supply is coming up again. But it probably won't get up to where we were last July. So supply is staying down. That's how it works. How does it keep going down so methodically each year? Winter to summer, winter to summer. How does that happen? Here's how it happens. This is how many, how, how many, how much houses, housing we built each year. Here's the average over 50 years. And all of a sudden in the nineties, we started building a lot as population grew across America. And then we had four consecutive years of record setting number of homes built here. Then every builder in the country went under in the great recession. I mean, literally they're all gone. And the ones that stuck around are scared and started building one house at a time rather than a hundred at a time. Investors were spooked and didn't want to buy a lot. So what happens? For 14 straight years, we built almost no houses. That's how you get this far behind on housing supply. That's why it's going to take another decade for this housing market with regards to prices to correct. That's how long it'll take to shift from a seller's market to a buyer's market. It's gonna take a long time to build this many homes, guys. You can see, here's a different chart from the US Census Bureau about how many housing starts when we built new houses all the way up to 2006 and then boom. And we've been building behind every single year. We're still just getting back up to normal. We're still getting behind further and further behind every single year. Here's why. We keep having more babies. This is each decade, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s. And you can see that the amount of homes built is always pretty close to the number of population growth each decade. Every single decade, all the way up into the 2000s. And then the Great Recession happens. And look what happens from 2010 to 2020. We build almost five times less houses than we did make babies. And we're still getting further and further behind in the two and a half years since then. Supply is getting further and that's how supply keeps dropping. You guys get it? So you wonder how are we getting, how is supply getting lower? How does it keep getting, it's because we're getting further and further behind. We're, we're not building enough houses and there's lots of reasons for that. Now we've got supply chain issues. We've got inflation, the cost of lumber, the cost of plumbing, the cost of labor, the cost of everything. 
So supply is getting way behind. So the idea that housing prices are going to turn around anytime soon, it's ludicrous. That's why everyone's buying real estate that knows about it. That's why every hedge fund's doing it, every real estate investment trust. That's why Bezos, that's why Elon Musk, they're all going into investing in startups that are just buying up housing across the country. They don't care that your clients can't afford it. They know your clients are like firemen and teachers and aren't going to pull the trigger. They make great tenants. American dream turns into the American nightmare. It's up to you to convince them they need to get competitive. Because if they're waiting, oh boy, it's a bad move. If you're waiting on investing too, boy, is that a bad move. I remember people, the way you feel right now about the market uncertain, I want to wait to buy and wait to invest. I mean, you felt that way last year and you felt that way the year before and you felt that way the year before. You feel that way every year. Trust me, it doesn't change. It's never going to feel right. The only time it'll really be right is that one time in the distant future when there's a, a shift in the buyer, seller's market to a buyer's market. And that will be the time you don't have the money or the courage to buy. <laughs> you buy when it's uncomfortable. Make sense? All right, I'm going to keep it going for you. Moving next, cost of lumber versus now. You can see on those costs to build, it's literally 10 times more expensive to buy the lumber to frame a house than it is now. That makes it harder to build a lot of houses. Makes it tougher to get. That's just lumber, not including all the other, you know, nails and, you know, drywall and everything else. Way more expensive now than before. Okay? It's hard. Now, check this out. Here's buyer demand for a minute. Look at how many loans we did leading up to the Great Recession for people with a credit score under 620. Now look at how many loans we're doing for low subprime mortgages. Almost none. Because almost no one in America, so I mean, our buyers now are strong buyers with great credit and lots of equity. We're not doing those lending practices we did before. You can see the amount of household debt as a percentage of disposable income is way down. People are not refinancing and cashing out and buying jet skis and toy haulers. They're just not doing that. They're cautious. They know what can happen now. So I can, you know, financially, Americans are just in a much better place. They have lots of equity. They have high credit scores. They don't have, spend a lot of their disposable income on their mortgage payments. It's a much smaller percentage of it. Check out the credit scores of Americans. This is going to bum you all out because you all have high credit scores right now, probably the highest you've ever had. And I'm just here to tell you that's kind of a thing. <laughs> Look at all the lavender are people with credit scores above 760. Look at the percentage of Americans, guys. That's got to be one of the most mind boggling stats. Almost every American has amazing credit above a 760. You're, you're hard pressed to find people with bad credit anymore. That's how well Americans are doing. That's why we have runaway inflation, guys. That's why the economy is doing too good. So if you got an 800 credit score, just understand, I know a lot of people do right now. Another reason people aren't going to default on loans and housing prices aren't going to go the other direction. Okay. Look at U.S. homeowner equity. This is how much equity, I mean, this should be pretty obvious to you, that people have in their houses. I mean, if worse comes to worse, they can just cash out, refinance, they can sell it and get the money. They can get a HELOC. I mean, all of a sudden, they just, I mean, most people that own a home have, have so much wealth in their house. Buyer demand is strong. They can still buy investment homes, rental homes. It's phenomenal. Look, and, and of course, this is what's happening with rent. This is what blows people away. So they're like, how, what, you know, why are, you know, people still buying houses? Pretty soon they're not going to be able to afford it anymore and housing prices have to come down. Oh, not true because investors will keep buying it up because rent is covering those increased prices. Because as investors, we can go out and buy a house, put 25% down, 20% down at a high price. And still rent's going up to a level where it'll cover that increased mortgage payment. That's why rents are going up too. So if you're going to buy a house or live in a house, you're either going to pay high rent or a high price, one or the other. Because they've more than doubled in our country. Or almost doubled in our country. And, and are showing no signs of going down. 
because of there's less inventory. This makes sense to everybody?